And so we thank you, Lord God. We give you praise in advance, Father God. These things you ask in Jesus' name. Everybody says, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I would like to give honor to God who's head of my life and to, and to Amen. And to uh, Pastor Pastor Frank uh, of this uh, ministry, the name of the ministry. Touch heaven. Touch heaven. Touch God bless you. Honor. Just want to give honor uh, to what honors do. And uh, to the I Am Concerned uh, ministry team, to Mama Lugo, and to the Prophet, and to all of my brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I'm just thankful and, and honored to be here. Uh, I'm not going to be before long, but if we can go to Luke, uh, the 22nd chapter, I'm just going to read one scripture, and that scripture will be verse 45 and 46 for a scriptural context. What chapter do you want to Luke, the 22nd chapter. We're going to look at verse 45 and 46. As a scripture on context, when you find it, you can say amen. 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 This is a familiar text. And we are amen. approaching Passover season. Amen. 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 And it reads, when he rose from prayer talking about Jesus and had come to his disciples he found them sleeping from sorrow he said to them why do you sleep rise and pray lest you fall into temptation and what the Lord has dropped in my spirit he says you're supposed to be praying but you're sleeping you're supposed to be praying but you're sleeping what well, the Lord has put in my spirit on tonight, we've been dealing with prayer for this month by intercede for me. Intercede for me is not necessarily just praying for me, but it's praying for that loved one, praying for that one that's lost, praying for that one that you see on the street corner, praying for others. But then even on last Sunday at, at Sick Ministries where, where I, I am the apostle and pastor, we talked about praying or interceding for your enemy. Mm. Good. Good. Because even Jesus interceded for his enemy, for he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. So what God is challenging us in this season is that for us as believers, we are to intercede for one another and even for your enemy. For that one you don't get along with, he said, you need to be interceding for them. Because just like we needed Christ's prophet, your enemy needed Christ as well. And so you need to intercede for them because God says, I wish that none perish. So your enemy can be perishing if you don't intercede for him. Do you understand? When you begin to intercede for your enemy, intercede for your loved one, what should have took them out didn't take them out. Yeah. Why? Because you was interceding for them. Do you understand before we accepted Christ, there was somebody interceding for us? Yeah. And I'm so glad that I had an aunt that was praying for me. 
that she's seen how Christ yet transformed her life. And she introduced me to Jesus. But until I had my own personal relationship, she was interceding for me. She didn't stop praying for me. What does the intercede or the Latin word intercede though means come in between. So what God is challenging us to do because uh, God, Jesus is a mediator between God and man. He's still mediating and interceding for us in heaven. But he says intercede though is to come between. So when I was talking about praying for your enemies, what God is saying, listen, your enemy can't hear me. So what he's asking us to do is come in between for them. Now they still lied on you. They still talked about you. They still messed up uh, uh, the relationship that you and them have. But God says, I want you to come in between for them. That's what intercedo means. Come in between. So that's what we are. We are intercessors because we're in Christ. The book of Bible says that special fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. That our prayers, because we are believers, are effective. And we accomplish much in the spirit realm yeah. because we're in Him and who is within us. But here we are in this text, and, and, and the Holy Spirit said, just go by verse by verse. I'm going to start with verse 39 because part of this text here I'll be ministering on tomorrow. But the Lord led me to this part of the text. He said, Minister on this tonight. And it's only to encourage. I believe in encouraging the brothers and sisters. I really do. Because we've been downtrodden, we've been talked about, we've been put down long enough. Aren't you tired of coming to church and you got the same preacher talking about you over the pulpit, talking about your business, trying to bash your name? And so God is putting in my heart, instead of tearing them down, build them up. That's scripture because we are supposed to exhort one another. Verse 39, 22, 39, this is according to his custom, talking about Jesus. See, Jesus had a strong prayer life. Mm -hmm. It says according to his custom. This was, a, this was a common thing for him. Jesus always spent time talking to the Father. I hope that just spoke to you right there. He never stopped communicating with the Father. So what does that tell us as believers that we should not stop communicating with the Father? Yeah, that's right. He says, and he came out. What do you mean he came out? He just got done fellowshipping with the disciples. They just experienced the Passover or the Last Supper. Now, the Passover is on the 14th day, but this is the 13th day. But because Jesus was that unblemished lamb, he was the one that was going to be sacrificed on the 14th day. So he had to have the Last Supper on the 13th day. Now, really, you have to go back to Exodus, the 12th chapter, uh, when you have the 10 plagues. And the 10th plague, it dealt with the Passover. Uh-huh. And with the Passover, what happened when God spoke to Moses, he spoke to Aaron, he said, listen, uh, to tell my children they need to get ready for the Passover. He told them how to prepare. They had to prepare an unblemished lamb, and then they had to uh, sacrifice it and put the blood on the doorpost, which is right above the door, and then the lentils are on the side, and so he put the blood on the side, so when the death angel passed over, he saw the blood. See, the blood is necessary because the reality of it is you and I should have been dead. Yeah. But you saw the blood. Do you guys understand the reason why that bullet did not take you out, Prophet? Just like it should have took me out as well. I remember somebody shooting at me. And I seen the bullets passing by. The death angel was in the vicinity. But the bullet did not hit me because the devil, because the, the death angel saw the blood. So what happened was as the bullets was passing by, the death angel just passed over me because he saw the blood. Do you know what I understand the reason why cancer didn't hit your mind yet? Diabetes didn't hit your mind yet? When you slept with that person you weren't supposed to sleep with, you didn't catch herpes or HIV? That it was a death angel that was in the vicinity, but because he saw the blood, he said, I'm going to pass over. Just trying to help you. The reason why we're here is because of the Passover. The death angel said it wasn't time. I remember my sister, and she, she got into a, a fire. And, 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 and when she told me, she's like, bro, I seen Jesus. She said, I, I seen him. She, and I hope she come one time. I'm going to have her come and tell her testimony. She, she'll tell her better than me. But she said, I seen him. And she said, I reached out to him. But he said it was not my time. Uh, the death angel was in the vicinity because my sister really ain't supposed to be here. But since Jesus told her it was not time, she's still here because of the blood. So we need to understand that the blood still works. 
You think because cancer hits your body that blood doesn't still work? Yes, it does. It still works. It still works. You got to keep believing. So he says he came out after he fellowship with the disciples. And he says he went to the Mount of Olives. This is where his normal custom. And, and he and his disciples followed him. When he came there, he said, pray that you may not fall into temptation. Now, some of your Bibles will say, pray that you do not overcome by temptation. But see, now that we're in Christ, we are overcomers. Right. So then that tells me that if I'm an overcomer, then whatever I was before I was in Christ, or now that I am a believer, I should not be struggling with temptation because I'm, I've overcame it. Because Christ has overcame it, so I am an overcomer. So that means my temptation and my sin and what I was struggling with no longer has dominion over me. I now have dominion over it. So I, I'm trying to occur. You know what the problem with us as believers? We don't know who we are. See, if you knew you were overcomer, you wouldn't keep struggling with fornication. If you knew you were overcomer, you wouldn't keep struggling with some of the, the partying and some of the stuff we do. You wouldn't struggle with pornography and connecting with the wrong people. If you knew that you were an overcomer, you are an overcomer. Get that in your spirit. I don't care what you're struggling with now. Know that you can overcome it because Christ has overcame it. So he says, pray. Pray, petition, that you may not fall into temptation. So he said, you should be communicating with me because temptation is right there. But if you communicate with me, he said, now what the him who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless in the presence of his glory. So what he's saying is, you don't have to fall into the temptation. If you keep praying and communicating with me, you won't fall into this. But what happens to us, I like it. Luke 18 and 1 says, men shall always pray and faint not. But our struggle is we start praying. You know the only time we pray is when we're in the storm. We pray more when we're in the storm than when we're not in the storm. But see, the problem is, and, and, and I put it on Facebook because I like to throw some little nuggets out there every now and then, is that the reason why you wasn't prepared for the unexpected storm is because you should have been praying but you were sleeping. There's people in the church that are sleeping. You know why you're sleeping? Because you're not using your gift. See, if you was working, using your gift to build the kingdom, if you knew your identity, you wouldn't keep sitting there. But because the pastor want to be the only one prophesying, the pastor want to be the only one teaching, the pastor want to be the only one uh, doing everything, that he doesn't give you an opportunity to go forth. So then you fall asleep. Why? Because you're bored. So you go back to the world because why? Because you're bored. You're tired of coming to church and you only hearing one person preach. That's why I tell people at Sick Ministries, listen, you got work to do. Don't think you're going to come here and sit. No, if you got a gift to teach, then you're going to teach. If you can preach, preach. If you can prophesy, prophesy. Whatever your gift is, it has to operate in the church. It has to operate in the church to fellowship. Why? Because I need your gift. Do you understand the body will not function right if you don't operate no gift? If you wonder why the body of Christ is suffering, it's because people are sitting on their gift. So because you sit on your gift, I suffer. You may have the gift of healing. And we have people in the church that are sick and they're waiting for you to pray and intercede for them so they can be healed. But because the pastor keeps telling you, no, 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 you ain't got that gift and no, you can't operate in that and you ain't ready to do that. Because they keep telling you, you keep sitting on your gift. And there's people dying in the congregation because they're waiting for you to pray and lay hands on them. But you keep sitting there. And so the body of Christ suffers. He's given us gifts without repentance. That means whether you saved or not saved, you are gifted. You are. And he's not giving you the gift to take it back, but he gave it to you to build a kingdom. Now the difference between you and I is that now that I'm in Christ, I get a well done if I continue to use my gift until he comes back. Ah. Now there are people that are not saved and they're using their gift, they're not going to get a well done. Yes, God will say, yeah, uh, uh, thank you for using your gift. I appreciate you using your gift, but depart from me, you workers of iniquity, because you wasn't in me. Uh -huh. There is a particular passage of scripture that deals with the talents. So I gave one this talent and one five. But if you really study the context of the scripture, it really wasn't talking about money. It was talking about your gift. Mm -hmm. That when he comes back, he wants to find you working, not sitting. And so the one in the text hid his gift. 
And so when the God comes back, when the landlord comes back, he finds something not working because he hid his gift. God says, so stop hiding your gift. If you're in a house and they don't uh, they don't accept you or your gift, then you need to pray and find where God has you to be. Come on. And stop waiting to use your gift inside the four walls because really your gift is supposed to be operating also outside. See, some of you are waiting inside. There's people who have business ideas and you're trying to find a way, how can I work my business inside the four walls? It wasn't meant for the four walls. You're supposed to go outside and build and then help those who are on the inside. I'm just not going to allow you to sit there on your gift. I just want to encourage you. But you have to stop falling into temptation. You don't have to fall into it. It's our choice. We've been choosing to fall into the temptation. God is telling us you don't have to. You don't have to keep giving into that, but you keep giving into it. And so then you wonder why you're not functioning in the power and authority because you keep giving into something that you already conquered and already have defeated. But you don't think you defeated because of the struggle. But you defeated it because Christ defeated it. So what he says in verse 41, he said, he withdrew from them about a stone away. So disciples are here. Jesus goes over there. He goes to pray. Verse 42 says, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Now the Father, he, he can do it. He saw it. He could do what he wanted to do. But he was looking in that cup. In that cup of suffering. In that cup is the struggle. In that cup is all the stuff that he had to go through for us. Matter of fact, we had a cup. And in that cup, we couldn't even bear what was in that cup. Fornication was in my cup. I feel the Holy Ghost masturbation was in my cup. Pornography was in my cup. Profanity, lying was in my cup. And so what happens was, because I wasn't worthy enough to die for what was in the cup, he took the cup and said, ah, I'll put that in there. That's what he did with all our individual cups. He put it in that cup. And so when he saw what was in the cup, he said, I got to, I got to die for this. I got to die because uh, uh, India, uh, I got to die because you, you was a liar. Uh, uh, I got to die for that. Uh, uh, Justin, uh, you, you were struggling with with, with fornication, oh, I got I got He was looking in that cup, and he saw all the sin. He said, "Lord, I, I know." He said, "Daddy, I know you're willing." This was Jesus in his humanity, and he said, "Man, this, this stuff is bad because I got to bear this thing." He said, "I really don't want to bear it," but he said, "Nevertheless, I'm so glad he told his daddy, nevertheless." <laughs> Do you understand? If he didn't say nevertheless, we will be in trouble. Because we would not have the power and dominion to conquer what had conquered us. We will be defeated still. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will. You know what? We got to move our personal will out the way. If you're wondering why God cannot operate through you freely, it's because your will can get it in the way. So your will is carnal. You want all this carnality stuff. And he says, my will is in heaven. My will is about the kingdom. There's a difference from God's will and your will. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. Because it's the Holy Spirit that reveals the will of the Father to you. You didn't even know what to pray for until the Holy Spirit came on the inside of you. Our prayers, we were selfish, self-centered. We didn't think about nobody else. But when the Holy Spirit came on the inside of us and began to reveal the will of the Father to us, now we were able to pray more effectively because it was the Holy Spirit revealing to us the will and so we can speak to and pray to heaven. That's why when you pray, you're supposed to pray the will of the Father into the atmosphere. When you pray the word or the will of the Father into the atmosphere, that's why the atmosphere begins to shift. So when you pray that stuff that you've been praying, that's why the atmosphere don't shift. That's why you don't get through the stuff that you're getting through because you're praying the wrong stuff. But that's why you must know the word and put the word into the atmosphere because they say Satan is a prince of the air. He's a prince of air. So you shake up whatever he's trying to do in the atmosphere. Now, I say this at Satan Ministries, and I hope some of you don't get offended, but I don't really care about Satan. 
Listen to me. He only appeared, prophet, and I said it, and I said it again, to three people. He appeared to Adam, he appeared to Job, and to Jesus. He's not thinking about us like you're thinking about him. Do you understand y'all talk about more about Satan than y'all talk about Jesus? Every time something happens bad, Satan always got to come out your mouth. The, the devil's touching my finances. No, the devil didn't touch your finances. You just don't know how to manage your finances. All you have to do is ask for wisdom, and he'll help you manage your finances. Stop blaming everything on the devil. He's not thinking about you. Even as anointed as Apostle Paul was, all he did was send somebody to buffer him. And even as anointed as he was, he's not thinking about you like you're thinking about him. You keep giving all this credence and all this respect to Satan and his I don't care about what he's doing. Listen, if I get a flat tire, I said it before, if I get a flat tire, it's because I ran over a pothole. It had nothing to do with Satan. I'm not giving him that. But that's what y'all do. As soon as you get fired from the job, oh, Lord, I got fired from my job, and the devil, the devil ain't did nothing. You was late too many times. You wasn't doing what you're supposed to do, and the supervisor got tired of you, and so he fired you. And there are some times God has a different job for you, and so he has to fire you so you can get what he has to do, because you want to leave. Some of you like to get comfortable. So what God does, he makes it uncomfortable so you can move where he got you and where he wants you to be. So next time you get fired, don't get mad at Satan and say, Lord, what, what do you have for me? What do you have for me? He said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. So he's saying, Father, your will have to be fulfilled. Do you understand the Holy Spirit has a work to do, prophet? And we've been grieving the Holy Spirit more than we've been allowing him to do what he's supposed to do. The Holy Spirit was sent here for a purpose. He has work to do on the inside of us. His job is to make sure that we look like Jesus in the earth. But we keep grieving the Holy Spirit. So that's why people keep walking past you instead of stopping. Because they need to see the light. You cannot dibble dabble and sin. I'm sorry. You can't keep you can't keep going to the club and say I'm living for God. So a lot of people don't want to hear that, but it's the truth. If you are a light, unless God has ordained you and divinely sent you to a club to go prophesy to somebody, listen, stop all that dibble and dabble stuff. It's either you're gonna live saved or not saved. There's no gray areas. It's either clean or unclean, holy or unholy. It's, it's one or the other. That's the word of God. I know it's, it seems so hard because we want to have a foot in the world and, and, and a foot in the church and, and a foot in and, and you got you to gotta stop all of that. Because you're lukewarm. He's going to spit you up. Let me keep going because it's hours late. So verse 43 says, And the angel from heaven appeared to him and it strengthened him. So if an angel can appear to Jesus in his agony, in his humanity, because he was 100% God, he was 100% man. So he was God because you've seen how he operated in the kingdom. The kingdom was present because he, the, the power of light was over the power of darkness. We've seen the, 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 the kingdom of God present through Jesus. So if we've seen it through present through Jesus and the kingdom of God, according to the scripture, he's trying to establish it in our heart. So if he's trying to establish his kingdom in, the, in our hearts, we're supposed to do the same thing Jesus did. But he has to get the kingdom in our heart first. You've got too much stuff in your heart, and it's, it's, it, it is hindering God establishing his kingdom in your heart. So you can't have, listen, listen, fear and kingdom cannot occupy the same space. Hatred and kingdom cannot operate in the same space. So guess what? Hatred has to get out. Fear has to get out. Lust has to get out. Unforgiveness has to get out. Because he's trying to establish his kingdom in your heart. So an angel came and stripped him. So then it tells me, you always know, say, you know, we got angels that are assigned to our life. That is the angel that are assigned to our life that keeps us strengthened. He keeps us strong. He keeps us strong when we feel like giving up. And being in anguish, the scripture says, he prayed more earnestly, more, uh, he, he, he really went into prayer to the point where his sweat became like great drops of blood. He was praying heavy. 
because he knew that his time on earth was winding up. He's been telling his apostles or disciples, my time is winding up. My time is winding up. I think it's Luke, the ninth chapter, it talks about um, he had to get to Jerusalem. He had to get to Jerusalem because that's where his suffering was. That's where his persecution was. See, some of us have been trying to avoid the city that God is trying to send us to because we're trying to avoid the persecution or the suffering. We are partakers of Christ. So as he suffered, we also will suffer. So there is a time and season that we're coming into that you cannot avoid because you're in Christ. You will experience suffering for his name's sake. And he prayed more earnestly and his sweat became like drops, like great drops of blood. Falling. It wasn't that blood was falling down, it just that's how the sweat was coming off of him. And when he rose from prayer, he had come to his disciples. He found them sleeping. Christ is soon to come back, and yep. some of you are sleeping. There was a point in time when you're going to sleep. But this is not the time to be sleeping. But you've been sleeping. And you don't understand that the Father is watching you. There are some people that are leaving this earth and they were sleeping. Uh -huh. They wasn't praying. But you were supposed to be praying, but you decided to fall asleep. You have missed what God has for you <laughs> sleeping. See, sleeping means I was procrastinating. Come on. Um, I know I'm supposed to be here, but I'm going to just take my time. Come on, man. Sleeping is disobedience. Come on. That's what sleeping is. It's disobedience because they were supposed to be praying with Jesus. That's a bad thing. To be connected with somebody and they ain't praying for you. Ooh. There's no use of us being connected. That's what's wrong with some of them. We're connected to the wrong people. And the people we're supposed to be connected to are those who are interceding for us. Those who are coming between for us. They're supposed to be praying and keeping our arms up, but when you're connected to the wrong people, they'll be sleeping on you. Mm -hmm. There's nothing worse than to be in a situation and you think they with you and you turn around and they're nowhere to be found. But I thank God for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ooh, I got excited right here because Hallelujah. it does not matter the season you're in, no matter what you're going through, the Holy Ghost is right there every step of the way. Matter of fact, I didn't know Holy Ghost wanted to say all this tonight, but he said, I'll give you what to say in that last second, that yeah. last hour. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But if I didn't spend time with the Father in prayer, I would not know what to say, but I'm trying to tell you all tonight. Get in this word, know this word inside out. Stop waiting for the preacher to teach this word. You need to get in this word for yourself. Know the word for yourself. The reason why some of you are deceived because you don't know the word. Uh -huh. Satan knows the word better than you. That's why it's so easy for him to deceive you. Because he knows the word and he knows how to twist the word because you don't read the word or spend time in the word so you don't know the word. The word is supposed to be flowing out of you. So when, you, when you're in trouble, the word should regurgitate right out of your mouth. But because you don't spend time in it, nothing is coming out. I would hate to go to Huntington Bank and, and I ain't got no money in there. I would hate it. It would be so embarrassing to have a line behind me and I go into Huntington Bank and I have nothing in there. When you start praying, you're depositing God, depositing his word on the inside of you. You don't know the season you're coming into, so you need more of the word. He says, but why do you sleep? He said, rise. This is the season God said, rise and pray. Hey, stop praying for the job. You spend more time praying for jobs and money. God says, seek you first the kingdom of God. Oh, yeah. Do you understand if you focus on the kingdom and what he called you to do and the assignment he's given you? He said, don't pray about what to wear. Don't pray about what to eat. He said, I'll take care of those things. Yeah. We spend more time praying for clothes, food, bills to be paid. And God's been paying our, our electric bill. He's been paying our heat bill. He's been paying your car note. Yeah. He's been paying all these things. Why are you worried about something that he's been already taken care of? Right. We have a kingdom assignment. There's things that he wants us to pray for. And you have to have the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit, what is it and who is it do I need to pray for? 
Intercede for me. Ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, who is it that's about to commit suicide? And I may not know them, but you want me to intercede on their behalf. So when they're about to take that knife, they begin to shake that they can't do it. And they drop the knife because of your intercession. But he says, rise and pray. Why? He said, why do we say rise and pray? He said, at least you fall into temptation. I said this, and this is something that God put in my spirit, and I shared it with Prophet, and he agrees. And so I'm going to share it with you. This is a season that we have to mature, and I said it at Apostles Church. And this is just what the Lord's put in my spirit to say, and I'm done. This is a season that we have to mature from knowing God to being God. Everywhere we go, we talk about, yeah, I know Jesus. Yeah, I know him as a healer. I know him as a deliverer. Oh, I know him as a way maker. But it's time for us to be him. If the Holy Spirit is on the inside of us, it's time for us to be him. Come on. What do you mean? Be love. Be forgiving. Be merciful. Be compassionate. It's time for you to be him. See, the world needs us to be him. Mm -hmm. Rather than just trying to act like him. Come on. We need to be God. That's right. Because when we be God, then we're able to do whatever he, he needs us to do in the earth. Uh -huh. Come on, Stan. You thought I was going to keep preaching. <laughs> your job, your responsibility. Now, you don't, now there are some people that have to get to intercede. They just they wake up all times of life. If God speaks to them, they know who to pray for, all that thing. But you don't have to have the gift as an intercessory prayer warrior. All you got to do is ask the Father. The Father said, I will withhold no good thing from you. And so when you ask him, Lord, who is it that you want me to pray for? He will reveal to you who he wants you to pray for. All you have to do is ask. You have not because you ask not. If you don't know your assignment, then ask him. Lord, a lot of the times we've already been doing our assignment. Mm -hmm. You didn't know that. Some of you have been just doing stuff. You think you're just doing stuff, but no, it's really what God called you to do. And then some of us are doing what God has called us to do. And we're trying to fight against what God has called us to do because it don't make sense to us. And we don't like all the struggle and all the confusion. But God said, no, that's what I called you to do. What am I saying? What am I saying? I, I'm a natural teacher. I'm a teacher. I teach at school. I've been doing it 14, 15 years. Love teaching. But then God said, listen, I'm just showing you in the natural who you are. You're also supposed to teach the word of God. Yes. I love coaching. I love coaching. I love coaching kids and, and coaching high school kids. And now he said, son, you already graduated from coaching kids. Now you have to coach them in the house of God. So it does it, it makes sense now the reason why I try to do everything team effort. Come on. Mm -hmm. It's important. This is one of the things I did as a coach. I didn't care if they couldn't dribble, they couldn't shoot, they, they couldn't even tie their shoes right. What I would do as a coach, I would teach them how to at least box out and at least play defense. Even if they couldn't play defense, I said, listen, just go in the game, box somebody out and get a rebound. So what I try to tell those in the body of Christ, listen, whatever gift you have, use it. So when that individual, when my player goes into the game, they know coach told me to just box out and grab a rebound. Or coach told me to just play some defense. See? I'm trying to encourage you on tonight. Yes, that God has been telling you to do some things. Yes, Lord. It takes a faith step. Yes. You cannot calculate a faith step. That's true. Sometimes it may be a faith leap. You cannot calculate a faith leap. You just have to take it. See, the reason why we're missing the mark is because we keep trying to calculate stuff. You can't calculate this stuff. When God say go, just go. Because you know what happens to us, prophet? God said take a faith step and we try to leave. Then we get out there like, oh my gosh, how did I get out here? I didn't take you to tell you to take a leap. I told you to take a step. Because our steps are ordered by him. There are divine steps that we're supposed to take. There are divine leaps that we're supposed to take. And you're still waiting for man to say go. 
you understand if I want you to be a I would not be up here. I love being the underdog. I love it. Jesus was the underdog. And he was the victorious one. We're the underdogs. Because guess what? We don't have enough education to preach. We don't got our PhD. We don't got all these credentials that they want us to have. And they're wondering, how are you prophesying? You didn't go to school this. How are you teaching this? And, and you, you're not qualified. Oh, weren't you the one that had a child out of wedlock? Yeah. My oldest is about to be 21 years old. But guess what? I'm still qualified because God qualified me. He knew I was going to mess up. He knew I was going to get beside myself. He knew that. He knew our mess ups. But he said, don't worry about what man. He said, don't fear what man can say or do. He says, fear the one who possesses your soul. That's what he said. Fear, reverence the one that possesses your soul. So on tonight, I was going to call an altar call, but I want to help somebody. Walk in what God has called you to do. And all I'm going to do is pray with you. I'm not going to push you down as some people try to do. Push it on your head and fall. No. You know, you know what? Holy Ghost spoke to me, prophet. He said, I will not preach in traditional churches. I will not. I was down in Nashville and I said this because the Holy Ghost revealed it to me. He said, Some of you will not preach in traditional churches. And it was revelation to me because where I was was not a traditional church. It didn't click. This is not a traditional ministry. So God continues to confirm. But if you have not been doing what God has told you to do, for whatever reason, I just want you to come to the altar and just repent. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to encourage you. But you have to walk in what God's called you to do, or the body of Christ suffers. The body of Christ suffers because you're disobedient. I don't want you to be disobedient anymore. I really don't. I don't want Jesus to come back and you were in disobedience. Because a lot of us, we put everybody in heaven. We put everybody in heaven. You seen that brother at the club last night? You like you put that brother in heaven because he got shot? No, 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 no. no. You put everybody in heaven. People don't like me because I'm just real about it. It's time for us to do what God's called us to do. So my prayer on tonight is I'm encouraging you. The next time the Holy Spirit speaks to you, just be obedient. Just be obedient. Stop waiting for... I'm going to really get in trouble. I'll say it. Stop waiting for your pastor to tell you what to do. Stop waiting. Stop. Stop waiting. The hour is ready to stop waiting. Here's your opportunity to repent. I like what he told Peter, and I'm probably ministering on it tomorrow's part of my sermon. He said, Peter, when thou art converted, he says, strengthen your brothers. He said, you're coming to the altar and say, Lord, forgive me because I have not been doing what you have told me to do. So he says, when you repent, he will strengthen you. So you can strengthen your brother, but you have to first repent. Your repentance is not a bad thing. I think John, 1 John 1 and 9 said, all have sinned. Anybody think they didn't sin, you're a liar. I'm just here to encourage you. Come on, close your eyes. I want you to talk to the Father. Some of you always waited for a contact. You want hands touching. At Sig Ministries, however the Holy Ghost moves, is just how He moves. I want you tonight to talk to the Father. Talk to Him. I'm going to still pray with you. You know, there were some in the Bible that received the Holy Ghost and it wasn't because of hands laid on them. You know why God did that? Because he don't want you to think that you have to lay hands on somebody to feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> so 
Something you want to be your hands laid on you so you can fall out. No, 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 no. Holy Ghost is talking about it. That's very interesting. I just want to preach Bible. So, Father God, right now, I pray for my brother, minister, friend, Father God. God says, stop wrestling. Stop wrestling. Stop wrestling. He's put a work in you, but you keep trying to find other work. Stop trying to find other work. Follow the plan that he already put in place. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory. That's what you pray about. Glory. Lord, what is your plan? Glory. You're like so gifted and talented, but you fight with your past. God says, I already like delivered you from your past, and why do you have to keep fighting with your past? He says, just step forward. This time, step forward. He said, don't worry about what it looks like when you step forward. Talk to the Father about that first step. Because there's something that's going to happen when you take that first step. As I come to you, I feel it. You're hungry. I don't know where you worship at, but you're hungry. You want something from God. And I'm feeling that you're not getting what you want, what you've been seeking for. But the Lord says you're at the altar. He says, this is the time. Because there are no distractions around you. So he said, you can seek me because I'm in the room. I'm here in the room. He says, you can seek me. You can ask for whatever you desire. Matter of fact, before you ask for what you desire, the Father says, I want you to seek my will. If you don't know my will, the Holy Spirit says he's going to reveal his will to you tonight. So don't ask for what you desire. So I'll take care of that, but seek my will first. Just give those to me. So the reason why your hands is lifted, he wants to set you free. See, when your arms is folded, you hold all that he, that you, all that burden, all that stress, all that stuff you find, you're holding it in your bosom. And the Father said, when you opened your arms, you gave it to me. So he said, now, talk to me. I think the Lord had me prophesy to her before. You were supposed to be working. You had an assignment. I could be wrong if my home is coming wrong. I don't mind you. Were well, you at an I am concerned service some while back? And I said, What are you waiting for? Uh -huh. And you back at the altar again. Can I ask you, What are you waiting for? <laughs> See, I love the Holy Ghost because He said, I'll bring you back to your remembrance. The Holy Ghost is a revealer. See, we. You know, I asked you last time. Some of you are supposed to be still praying. God ain't done with you yet. Y'all done. See, that's that's the carnality. You was waiting for me to touch you and so you could fall out and we put this red thing. No, 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 no. Talk to the Father. You're in the perfect situation to talk to the Father because you have nobody else around you. And the stuff that you've been struggling with and fighting with, you have an opportunity to give it up. But you rather look at me and what I'm doing. No, no, no. Talk to the Father. 
I'm just trying to help you. I'm not beating up on you. I want to help you. There's two things I learned. When you say, I do and I go, you never know what's going to happen. When I said I do to my wife, I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. I really didn't. Because the dating process is, you know, it seemed like roses. But it wasn't until I said I do at the altar and then the stuff started happening. Don't be scared of the, I'll go. Just go. He's going to carry you through every season that you're in. He's not going to leave you. But he wants you to go. He'll hold your hand through the process. But he wants you to go this time. I'm going to be real. I don't want to see you at the altar again because you didn't go. Can I say this to I am concerned to those who come here? You have to graduate from this. I'm coming to the altar. If you came here and got your deliverance, then don't go back into what God has brought you out of. Some of you come up here, you weep, you cry, and then you get your deliverance, you speak in tongues, you get refilled, and then Satan is waiting for you right outside the door, and you just grab Satan by his hand, and we're going to go do it again. Once he set you free, you once you set you free, aren't you tired of going to the fall about the same stuff? I got tired of going to the fall about fornication. I said, listen, it's either I'm going to stop doing this or I'm going to live for you. So I, I said, daddy, I said, help me with fornication because I'm struggling. I shouldn't have got into it in the first place, but I need help. So he said, stop watching pornography. Stop watching, stop listening to the music you listen to. Stop hanging around people that are practicing. I had to get away from it all together until he strengthened me to the point that when I was around something, I would have the strength not to fall into it. See, we don't spend enough time with God. That's why we keep falling into the same temptation. You have to totally separate yourself from evil so he can strengthen you so if you are around it, you are not weak to get into it. Right, right, right. That's it, that's it. Our hearts are deeper than us. It's up to you. It's up to you. In Christ. It's up to you. It's up to you. It's up to you. It's like what I'm saying is, is there's not a limit. It's not like you go to Walmart and you're looking for a certain item and it's not on the shelf. That's not the kingdom of God. Whatever you want, God has it, is in his kingdom. You can go as deep as you want to go. And because you're a worshiper, it makes it easy. You can tap into a realm that the Father wants you to be. And you can experience more of it. Don't be afraid to tap into that realm. No, no. Don't be afraid to tap into it. There's some things he was going to show you when you really get in depth in your worship. Come on in, church. Don't be afraid.
pray for the youth. Come on, let's give God some praise. The Holy Spirit really wanted to show you all tonight that I don't have to lay hands on you for him to speak or for his power to manifest. You have to believe in his power. You have to believe it. If you don't believe in healing, he won't heal you. If you believe it, don't believe in prophecy, you won't prophesy. If you don't believe in deliverance, you won't experience that. If you don't believe that somebody can come in here and have no arm and that God can restore that arm whole, if you don't believe it, then it won't happen. I believe if Jesus did it in the earth, we also can do it as well. That's Bible. He says, greater works we should do. And he's talking about spreading the gospel. Not just raising the dead and healing the sick, but he's talking about spreading the gospel. But some of that greater work also, yes, to pray for somebody may be healed. God wants to use each of us because we're in the kingdom. We're so valuable, we're so necessary. Can I get that in your spirit that you are necessary? When you get in your spirit how important you are to the kingdom, you will just start working. And you'll see the Holy Spirit just start moving because you're working. Because why? We got work to do. What I want to do, prophet, and I'll leave it here. The Bible says, any man put his hand to the plow and looks back, he's not fit for the kingdom of God. Come here, Pastor. You have to teach people how to plow. That's the reason why you take your hand off the plow, because you don't know how to plow. So if the pastor, because she has a pastoral anointing on her life, if, she, if you allow her to teach you how to plow, then you would just work. But when you didn't know how to plow, you took your hands off, you started looking back, you started second guessing yourself. As leaders of I Am Concerned, you have to teach the people, and even your leaders, one, teach your leaders how to plow when you're not around. But then also, you have to teach those who are coming how to plow as well. You have to train up leaders. You have to train up leaders. Teach them how to plow. So they won't take their hand off the plow. I took my hand off the plow because I didn't know how to plow. But when I learned how to plow, I just plowed. I just worked. Get connected with a body, whether it's I am concerned. Get connected where a place can teach you how to buy. Come on. Father in heaven, we just come to you right now, Father God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Father God. We worship you right now, Father God. We thank you for how you spoke on tonight. I give all glory and honor to you, Father God. As Jesus always referred back to you, Father God, I get referred back to you, Father God. Because it was you that, your Holy Spirit that is here, Father God, that spoke through me, Father God. I was just a willing vessel that was desired to be used by you. I pray, Father God, that you got the glory out of everything that was said, Father God, the lives that was impacted on tonight, Father God. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, I declare and decree into the atmosphere that everybody in this room, Lord God, that has accepted you as their personal Savior, Father God, will get to work. I pray, Father God, that the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal to them. Matter of fact, I pray that they cannot rest. I pray that they cannot rest until they find their assignment. Because you already prepared them to fulfill their or complete their assignment. That they will not sit and sleep in church any longer. Awake. Wake up. Believers, wake up in the name of Jesus because you need to intercede and work for the kingdom. And we thank you, Father God, for all that you've done. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. And everybody, let's give God a hearty praise. Hallelujah. I said for the word of God tonight.
I said for the word of God tonight. Come on, we give God praise for the man of God tonight. We thank God for Apostle, Apostle Jesse.